Okay, we're back with Project Electrolyte. I've got a little bit of teardown going on today. You can see I've got the subframe out of the car. I've got the motor out of the subframe. I've got the inverter exposed. And of course everything came out of the car to do that. I've got the fuse out. So what happened? So yesterday I was driving the car early morning while it was cooler outside. I wanted to monitor my motor temps just to make sure I had good cooling uh, going to the motor. And so I did a kind of a launch control launch, holding the brake, holding full throttle, releasing the brake, which I've been working on uh, the traction. Car hooked great. Pulled really strong all the way through, uh, it was about 50 miles an hour is all. And then I let off into coast with some light uh, throttle off regen just because the battery cells were about uh, just over four volts and then I heard the pyro fuse blow so here's what the pyro fuse looks like this is the inside of it and if you look close you can see there's a little ram that's protruding from the bottom when it fires it just jams that ram right into the metal connector and breaks the connection so that got me thinking, why would the pyrofuse blow, especially not under a load? That's got to be some kind of a short. So this is where the fire pyrofuse is located in this box that I printed. And these are the main connections. So what I did is I tried a little test lead and I just put it right across where the fuse was. The test lead did not get hot whatsoever. So then I just put a little 8 gauge jump wire and I wanted to test the high voltage system. Everything worked. Air conditioning worked, DC-DC charging worked. The uh, Tesla drive unit powered up, showed full voltage. Everything was normal until I put the drive unit into forward or reverse. As soon as I selected forward or reverse, I got an overcurrent fault. Since it's all apart and up in the air, I thought I would take the opportunity to inspect all of my wiring. All of these 3D printed zip clamps I designed and printed are all holding up really great. I think you could actually hang on these wires and they would just hold on. So everything is isolated from the car, isolated from each other. I will be inspecting inside the boxes as much as possible. But since I jumped across the connection where the fuse blew, I would think there would be some kind of indication of a hard short. So hopefully I can just rule that possibility out. The next possible cause would be maybe the inverter failed, maybe my settings were out of whack and after a hard run and then letting off the inverter shorted somehow and then that caused the fuse to blow. Uh, that is I suppose a possibility, but after talking to some experts, uh, Chris at Zero EV and Matt Haber and some guys uh, on some forums that have seen this and had this, it all kind of points to losing power while driving. So that's e either a contactor opening up or blowing a fuse, which I definitely have a blown fuse. So if we take a closer look at the inverter, I pulled the cover plate off. You can see it's got a nice silicone seal. It's all watertight, but we do see some smoke. This drive unit is upside down right now. And here's the cover. You can see smoke in the cover. And if we look close, you can see where there's some burn points in the IGBTs. This is an indication of losing a power connection while driving. So it burned in multiple locations. You can see here. The other two phases actually look okay. There's no burning on this phase or the one that's now on the bottom. Everything is pretty solid, but this one took a hit. So it's possible to replace just one phase probably but I'm going to try to locate a uh, sport inverter and we'll get this swapped out and get it back on the road. While I've got this all apart 
it's a good opportunity to kind of look inside the inverter here. So this is the control board. You can see there's the Wi-Fi chip right there, the red chip. And this is uh, not the original Tesla parts. This is from Zero EV and Stealth EV. So that's what's all programmable and giving us the ability to do what we're doing with this motor. So there's one more thing I'm going to be doing. Uh, I was going to do it anyway, but it might even be easier now that things are taken apart. This is the AC compressor. See the big return line coming on this side. I'm going to add an AC chiller to the battery cooling system because at ambient temps that are hot, you cannot cool the batteries enough. Uh, you can only get it to, to ambient temp, um, which might actually be adding heat sometimes. So uh, we're going to just tap in an, a chiller that will be a flat plate heat exchanger. It'll be like a parallel evaporator in the system. So when needed, the uh, smart wire will read the temperature. It'll bypass the radiator, open up the uh, expansion valve on the chiller, and that will chill the batteries in just kind of a closed loop. That way I can keep them down closer to 80 degrees instead of uh, these hot days where they're getting to 95, 100, and, and maybe even a little higher. So, take the opportunity when you can to make some improvements. So as you can probably tell, getting this motor and inverter out of the car, it takes a few steps. Most everything in the back there, I've got it where I can just disconnect wires and hoses and calipers. But then, you have to take the drive unit out of the subframe. It's only mounted in here with three main mounting points. You've got the one in the front, which I've reinforced. You've got the one in the rear. And then you also have this side mount. Well, that side mount mounts to the motor with this bracket that has three mounting holes. Uh, if you leave the bracket on the motor, then you have to really angle the motor as you're hoisting it out. So it's much easier to just remove those three bolts. So when the three mounting points are disconnected, the only thing left are the half shafts. Uh, to get the half shafts out, they're in there pretty good. They've got a little uh, retaining clip in the end of the splines. So it takes a little bit of uh, prying to get those out. But uh, you don't have to remove the whole half shafts. You can just disconnect two of the upper links and that gives you enough flex on the spindles and the lower control arm that you can just uh, pull them out and then lift the motor right out. So that doesn't take very long at all, not too bad. I'll be reinstalling the subframe into the car without the motor in it until I can get a new inverter uh, here and replaced. And that'll just save me some room in the garage so I can get organized and ready for the replacement inverter. One more thing I'm considering since I'm adding the chiller on the battery side, which will completely bypass the radiator, then I can uh, use the larger half of the radiator for the motor cooling. And that will hopefully keep the motor cool even under extreme conditions, which so far has not been a problem, but I just thought it might be a good idea. Well, thanks for watching this episode. We will keep plugging away here. We'll get a new inverter swapped out and we'll keep pushing. This has been a really fun car. I've probably got a thousand miles on it. Most fun car I've ever driven. Just a great mix of the old with the new, the instant torque. Uh, everything's been really fun. So this is just a minor hiccup. I'll figure out what the problem was and uh, everything will be great. If you want to keep seeing these videos as I upload them, please hit the subscribe and the like and comment. I'd like to hear all your input. It's always uh, valuable information if anybody has anything to add. We'll see you next time. Thanks.